It is disassembly day. So been working on this thing, cooling lines, brake lines, just a lot of the tedious stuff that's uh, not very interesting. Uh, been putting it off to the end because it's not very interesting. But motor's coming out today. All the turbo stuff's coming off. Uh, I got a lot of welding to do. I want to go through the motor. And so my plans are to work on to get you know work on getting this thing running in a, in a short period of time so motor's gonna come out gonna go through it put it back in fuel system electrical um, and then I'll finish like the tedious body panels and little stuff later So I'm out here uh, just kind of cleaning up a lot of the little details on this thing. Gonna start blowing it apart. Motor's gonna come out probably tonight. And um, got all the panels out of the inside of it. It was just kind of welding like bolts on, some tabs on, and uh, was crawling around in this thing and didn't want to use the pedal. So I've got uh, my little makeshift torch set up um, on the Fronius Magic Wave 230i. And then uh, this thing is just trigger operated. So I don't have to, um, as long as I got the amperage right, I don't necessarily have to have a pedal. I can kind of climb around and get in those tight positions and uh, get the welding done. It's actually how most of this chassis was welded was just like that. I figured out that like 69, 70 amps was perfect. You kind of strike the arc, make a puddle and it would take a little while to make the puddle. But once you got the heat, in that puddle you can kind of rock and roll and um, a lot of these joints turned out really really well so i mean everything turned out pretty well i was pretty happy with it and so it just took a like standard 69 amps uh, to make that happen so i'm just going to use it in its same configuration i uh, got some stuff i'm gonna do under the hood no sense in switching it up i know what the amperage is i need i'll uh get those kind of tacked on and welded uh, waiting on somebody to bring back my engine hoist and as soon as it gets here motors coming out gonna blow all that stuff apart I'm tired of this thing sitting
honestly, if it was up to me, every car, well, I guess you can't do every car, but everything you'd ever work on would be designed similar to this, where in 25, 30 minutes, one person pulled the motor out. It'd be a perfect, perfect scenario, wouldn't it? Yes, those days are long gone. C10s, you could almost do that. Whole front clip would come off pretty easy. Back when, uh, back when I used to drag race, I used to kind of design parts on the car uh, to do just that. You know, I'd make pieces removable, easily removable, cross members and uh, radiator core supports and all that stuff would kind of pop right out. That way you get to slide the whole motor and train around the front. So something that's kind of crazy about this uh, this motor is that the entire car was built around this engine. Um, but I have no idea if it's any good or not. So when I bought this car, way back when, uh, it was a piece, I mean, if you've been watching a long time, because it's been a while, uh, I bought this car, cut it up. This was the motor that was in it. And I took it out, basically used it for mock-up for a long time. I mean, I guess I used it for mock-up the entire time. Uh, we took this thing to pits the first time. We kind of took it out and painted it and made it look halfway decent, but I have no idea what's on the inside of this thing. When I bought it, the dude was like, oh yeah, it's a race motor and whatever, and I knew better. So uh, it's supposed to be fresh, and I was kind of looking down in the lifter valley, and you could see where there's still assembly loop on the camshaft, so I don't think it's ever been run. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see what's inside this thing. Hopefully, hopefully it's in pretty good shape. The good thing is, is I'm not using much of it uh, other than like the rotating assembly in the block. It's got new camshaft, new lifters, new rockers, new heads. So as long as the as long as the main parts are good, we should be in good shape. So let's pull this bad boy apart and see, see what we're in for. To be honest with you, I'm just hoping for Stock, uh, unmessed with. Ouch. Crap. Well, the torque of the bolt's good.
All right, are we ready? Let's see what we're in for. Right. Oh, crap. I think we're okay. Not gonna, not gonna jump to any kind of conclusions right now. Pull the pan off, pull the other head off, then I'll pull the pan off and kind of see um, what the internals look like. And then maybe from the bottom side too, maybe we can see what kind of pistons they are. So basically same song and dance on this side. It's weird because the pistons, like this short block you could tell is not fresh. You can tell it's been run. Cylinder heads are fresh. Like plugs have never been run before. You know, those valves have never been run, doesn't look like. And they did a little bit of porting, looks like, on this thing. Port matching, maybe. So not really sure what they what they had in mind when they were building this thing, putting it together. So one of the cylinder walls right here looks pretty bad this thing may need to go 60 over can you go 60 over i don't know if you can go 60 over this thing might be junk Well, peeps, it doesn't look very promising. So under the hood, it looks like just a factory uh, 351 setup, probably from like the mid or late 60s, early 70s maybe. Probably came out of a truck or something. They did put a new oil pump on it. It's never even pulled any oil through them. That thing's nice and clean. I did miss the... Uh, yeah. Anyway, one cylinder, one cylinder is pretty rough. If it wasn't for that, I'd probably use it. So, I think I'm on the hunt for a 351. If you are anywhere in the southeast and you got a pretty clean 351 Windsor setup, let me know. Yeah. Man, why can't it just go smooth? 